Hi everyone, welcome. Wow, it's been a while since I've done a video, hasn't it? I know. I have no excuses. I've been very busy. And to be honest with you, um, I wanted to sell out of a lot of my soaps that had collected over the last year. And through gift bags and a few price reductions, I was able to actually do that and cleared out a lot of uh, soaps that I made last year. And this will be my first soap of the new year. Now, obviously, I'm making this on December 18th. Um, it is actually midnight, a little after midnight on Saturday, it's now into Sunday. I will be working in a, several hours. I get to go to work and earn a living uh, by other job. But this is the job that I really do enjoy, and so I'm taking an opportunity to get caught up on, like I said, some of the soaps that I need to remake. This is one of my customer favorites. Uh, right here in front of you is about 25 pounds of bison tallow. Um, I know you may not want to hear the gory details, so I won't tell those, but this animal was butchered about a week ago. Um, these, this is the tallow that's been rendered. Uh, I got well over a hundred pounds of this and I love it. I, it's one of my favorite ingredients and my customers must agree with that because my tallow products, including the tallow cream and the pure tallow that I sell, uh, along with the soap bars and the shaving bars and the lip balm are among my top sellers. So one of the things that I'm going to be doing in the new year is also selling some gift sets. Uh, I currently have only one gift set and it's a sample of three different of my products. It's the lanolin, the donkey milk cream, and the bison tallow cream. And that's a nice little sample set. But I'm also wanting to get into more of doing some gift sets like a bar of tallow soap, a jar of the tallow cream and maybe a tube of the tallow lip balm and that way it gives us someone the opportunity to test all the different products and get all the goodness of tallow which is become even more popular these days with keto diets and i think that's why my sales of the tallow has gone up quite a bit because of the interest in keto, which is less carbohydrates and more natural fats, uh, getting away from seed oils, which can be harmful in the processing of those. So more and more people are actually cooking with keto, eating keto, and want to bathe with keto and moisturize keto. So there and such is why I'm actually melting, as you watch right now, about 25 pounds of bison tallow. Once this is all melted, this is going to be what I'm going to call bison pure. There will be no goat milk in this. There will be no uh, fragrances. There will be no added colors. And I really like this uh, concept as the first soap of the year. I think it should be a very pure baby new year, fresh and new. And that's what this is going to be. And speaking of which, Tallow soap is a wonderful soap for babies. Why? Well, because it's very gentle. There's nothing harsh in it or stripping to the skin like coconut oil um, or allergens in it, such as certain seed oils. Um, certainly no essential oils in there, which could be irritating or other fragrances, no colorings. So this is truly ideal for infants as well. And actually, I use this fairy bar for bathing Barry and Dougie. Dougie is the other dog that I got. He was the last, he was the only puppy that I kept from Leia's babies. Leia is the Great Pyrenees dog that came to me um, as a replacement for my Great Pyrenees that had died. And so I purchased another female. She was not spayed, and I'm really a stickler on spaying and neutering all my animals, but she was unspayed, but they assured me that she had not been around any males, and well, what 
what happened. After I had her a couple weeks, she started putting on weight, and I soon recognized that weight as pregnancy, and before long, I had 10 little puppies, and I've done a video on the puppies before, and there were nine that were black, that were white with black spots, and one that's white with red spots, the one that was left with the red spots was sort of the outcast, and of course, he's the one that I was attracted to and took on. I'm sorry I'm doing all this talking. I haven't got to talk to you all in a while, so I'm doing so now, so hello. <laughs> all right, so I'll go ahead and get my tallow melted here, and we're gonna get this put together, and I've got some more chatting to do with you, so come on along. There's one. So one new addition is that I've got a new soap cutter. I've tried so many different soap cutters. I'm always willing to try different things and try to improve and find better solutions. And Custom Craft Tools has this new, it's a combination of a loaf splitter as well as a bar cutter. So. I decided to give it a shot. I purchased this, so I'm not a representative of them. I don't get any discounts or anything from them on this. Um, but what I will tell you is that I am making these extra big one and a half inch bars. Uh, I decided I wanted some really hefty bars for these because I want a bar that is long lasting and that is substantial for the customer. And this is a big hefty 10 ounce. I'm gonna have to weigh it to be absolutely sure, but I, based on previous uh, soaps that I've made, I believe this is gonna be close to 10 ounces. And it's a big hefty bar of soap. <laughs> I don't have small hands. and. This is a good size bar of soap. It's one and a half inches wide by uh, three and a half, three and a quarter inches across, and at its highest point, about three and a half inches long. So I think this one's going to be a really nice bar of soap to that'll last you a long time. Being pure tallow, it's going to last. 
it has the fragrance of tallow. <laughs> and that will, of course, subside, too, as the soap cures. But I'm very pleased with these. Um, again, these, like I said, these are going to be some monster bars of soap and uh, priced accordingly. But uh, there aren't too many people that are selling Oh, I forgot to pull, remove the thing. Uh, there aren't too many people that are selling bison tallow soap. And those that do understand the value that it is a more difficult product to come by and to, uh, that you have to price it accordingly. Um, I like this cutter. I like. I think I would like it better as a loaf splitter, as an individual bar cutter. I don't know. I mean, it works. Um, I'm so used to the lower, you know, you lower something down on the soap to cut it. And I do have a multi-bar cutter, which I like very much. But I was curious uh, to see uh, how, you know, this and I keep forgetting to remove it. That would be a problem that I'll probably continue to have if I'm using this one. Um, I can see an advantage to this. You have a lot more control over the cut than you do with just a bar cutter, I believe. Uh, it does a really nice job. Uh, they're very even. Uh, I need to clean up on them. That has nothing to do with the cutter, but I think that it does a really fine job uh, for what it does. Um, so if just cutting one bar at a time this way is something that you're looking for, um, I think that this might be advantageous. Because it does a really nice job. It's very clean. You're also not going to have the wear and tear that you do on a hinged unit, which I do have uh, those as well. I've got, I've probably got four or five different types of soap cutters. Uh, and there is something about this that is very simplistic. Somehow reminds me of like a type of musical instrument. I don't know. I'm sure it's the keys very similar to my multi stainless steel cutter, my multi bar cutter. But uh, anyway, enough about that. Uh, I do have several other soap videos that I, several, a few soap videos that I need to edit. Um, probably the next video that I do uh, that I finish is going to be my Awaken soap. Uh, I'm also going to be getting back into putting oh, bath bombs together, uh, something I enjoy doing and I've got tons of requests for are my bath bombs and I love making them and I actually have, well this is where it gets tricky because there's nothing to balance the bar against to cut this. so. Let me measure this the soap bar. So this soap bar is right at two inches. So if I cut off a half inch instead, about there, that should, that would be the way to do it, right? I think so. Let me hold on to it real tight. See if this will work. And that worked. <laughs> okay, good. So there's a trick. Just had to turn it around a bit, but very pleased. Uh, the cutter works very well. Uh, I think it's something that I will uh, maintain uh, to, or continue to use. Uh, but a few things that, you know, we haven't had a chance to chat for a while. Um, but you may be wondering, Patrick, what, you know, why have you been away so long? Why haven't you done any videos? And I did mention at the beginning that some of that was due to me trying to go through the soaps that I had because I had quite a bit of backstock, which I've now gone through. 
which also makes it, but that does make it more challenging um, to do my grab bags, but I do have enough soaps to maintain a few of those, but just the major, the majority of my soap I had sold out of. I'm everything, um, which is good because I get to make them all over again in the new year. And that's exciting. Uh, you know, it's wherever possible, unless it's something like a olive oil soap or a Aleppo soap that needs to age for a long time. Uh, it's better to go through your soaps a little quicker. Hang on, I need to tighten this a little bit. All right. So anyway, oh, where was I going with that? So, but that's not the only reason why uh, I haven't made a soap in a while. My company has merged with another company or is merging with another company actually right during the Christmas season. And we've been going through a transitional phase for the last month and a half at work. So I have been very, very busy and I'm trying to do my very best there because I do need the job for insurance and well, and quite frankly, it's good for me to have something outside of myself where I can help other people and not to say that the soap industry or the business as it is isn't helpful to other people i do think that there's a benefit to people selling these products or i wouldn't do it that's the truth i i don't think i would feel comfortable selling most things because i feel most things are kind of a ripoff you know car sales i have my own feelings about that and i won't get into the grand details of it but I have some reasons for not having a lot of trust in the automobile industry uh, or at least in sales I should say in auto sales uh, and I feel the same about real estate in many ways not saying that real estate people are bad or that car salesmen as a rule are bad or that lawyers are bad or that any particular uh, I don't believe that any uh, existing uh, occupation in itself is an evil thing or a bad thing. I really don't. But I do think that within those industries, there are some bad people. I hope that makes sense. Or maybe unscrupulous people, maybe a better way of putting it. Uh, folks that don't seem to care as much about the customer and what I like about this business first of all we're not talking about big amounts of money in comparison of course that's all relative uh, you know if you've got a thousand dollars in the bank and you lose five dollars that's not nearly as difficult as if you have ten dollars in the bank and lose five dollars you've just lost half of your money right and so I do try to treat my customers in this business uh, with respect, try not to overcharge on things. And I and some things are just more costly and I can't help that. The glass bottles that I use have gone up about 20% over the last year and a half. Um, the tins that I use have even gone up in cost. The, and anybody that's in this soaping business knows that olive oil and coconut oil and all sorts of things have gone up in price. And if we're not reflecting that in our sales, uh, or in our pricing of our products, well, it's going to hurt us, right? I mean... That's why I try to do this. This is why I try to make bigger products to at least give people a little better value for the prices I have to charge. 
Um, that's my opinion. Yes, there are companies that can sell a $5 bar of soap or less. You see it all the time. Go to the dollar store. You can get three bars of soap for $1.25. And if I were a large corporation using detergents in my soap and been a product that I would barely call soap in many regards, yeah, yeah, I suppose you could sell that a lot cheaper. They're not putting things like shea butter most of the times, or cocoa butter and cocum butter and mango butter and all the marvelous things that we put in our soaps. There are people who say, what's it matter about those? Soap is just to cleanse you. It shouldn't matter. Well, it matters to me because I personally do believe that there is a difference in the product based on the ingredients. And if you believe that, then that's terrific. We're on the same boat or in the same uh, state of mind. I wonder if I just go straight down. Oh, that does work. Good. So anyway, uh, one of the things that I suppose I worry about in the big scheme of things is that there will be more unscrupulous people than scrupulous people. <laughs> uh, I see it in the pricing like on Amazon, how one week you may pay $20 for a product, then they go, oh, someone bought it. Then they raise the price to $22. If you buy that one, then you'll notice it jumps up to $24. I don't know if you've noticed these things or not, but I do. And I know there are people who would say, well, that's just the market and it's going to go by demand. If people are willing to pay it, then they should be able to charge it. And I just don't feel that way. Um, now, if I only have a hundred of an item and I'm only selling one a week and then suddenly I'm selling 50 a week and I'm only going to have for two weeks and then they're all gone, am I going to adjust the price? No, why would I? It's not costing me any more to ship them all at once than it is to ship them one at a time. Matter of fact, it may be less expensive because if I'm shipping them one at a time and it takes months and months, well, the prices of postage can go up, UPS prices can go up, the prices of the uh, basic uh, the sacks that I put them in or the labels, those can all go up. So actually, to me, it doesn't make sense to raise your prices just because you have more business. If I'm wrong about that, tell me in the comments. Help me to understand better. <laughs> All right. So, uh, OK, I've got to get back. Uh, I've got things I need to do, but I want to thank you all so very much. I really appreciate you coming and spending time with me today. Big hugs to you all, and I hope to see you back soon. Goodbye.